9 now and what we're going to talk about this week is an extension of last week. Last week, if you recall, in week eight, we looked at the balance scorecard. We looked and we focused a lot on how the balance scorecard is used in organizations to support strategy as a formal extension of a firm strategy. And we focused mostly on the financial performance measures that would comprise the balance scorecard and how the measures can be used in a way to give reports to management about feedback and giving them feedback about whether they are successfully pursuing the strategy that they intend for the organization. This week we're going one step further in how various measures in the balance scorecard can be used to support management with its strategy but more in particular to support management with its operational decisions and its execution of strategy. So let's just have a look at this framework we've got here. The main stakeholders or the main decision makers that we first want to think of in the setting for today's lecture is the CEO, the CFO and the CIO. And often for good purposes or bad purposes, it is the financial measures that are most effective in getting attention of these C managers. It is the financial measures, the costs, the profits, the revenues, the productivity uh, measures associated with the financial that get attention of these C managers. And that's important if you need their attention to make decisions about the allocation of resources. These C managers are key to making big decisions about the allocation of resources, which is part of the execution of strategy in the organization. Now, having said that with the financial measures, today's lecture we're going to spend a little bit more time on internal measures and learning and growth measures, which fill out the part of the balance scorecard. So where do they fit into the getting attention framework of the C managers? Well, in many cases, non-financial measures help to support or explain what the financial measures mean in this process. But more particularly, non-financial measures help in giving quick feedback on various strategies that have been implemented. And in today's lecture, we will talk about different ways of reporting that feedback or ways in which you can analyze the non-financial measure data using Pareto charts, using control charts, and also using fishbone, in other words, cause-effect diagrams. The purpose of giving that feedback is to help in training, to help in giving feedback about how training initiatives are occurring, or any allocations that have been made to improve or implement different quality control initiatives. So this is our big framework, ultimately the big decision framework. And in today's lecture, we're going to revisit the financial measures in the cost of quality framework. And in revisiting the financial measures, we are looking at the four different areas that firms face when they're looking at uh, quality control problems. And they focus on uh, inspection and appraisal, uh, external, uh, external uh, inspection, and final warranty claims. And it's normally the internal inspection and appraisal categories that initiatives should be focused on why? Because you want to, because they tend to cause the external failures and also the warranty claims that come if you don't, if you don't stop bad quality going outside the organization. And so in today's lecture, we will look at how financial measures can be grouped in terms of these four categories. There is two internal and two external category. And the general rule is if we spend more dollars here on the internal category, then we can reduce the dollars or costs in the external category, especially when we're talking about warranty claims 
for bad quality and we'll go over several examples in today's lecture about bad quality that has occurred. So we will look at financial measures in that sense. So having said that the balance scorecard is a balance of financial and non-financial, it seems strange that we keep on focusing on financial and I just want to reiterate, reiterate the point that in organizations we use financial measures to get the attention of the big managers who are making the big decisions. After that, non-financial measures become very useful in may helping to execute initiatives, helping to give feedback about, about whether a particular quality initiative is working or not. And we talk about Pareto charts, control charts and fishbone diagrams in that process. So we will look at non-financial measures in today's lecture and it will be in the context of how do you actually report feedback in terms of these non-financial measures, how can they be used to help to implement various initiatives to deal with internal quality failures and things that happen inside the firm before bad quality gets outside the firm. So that's what we're going to cover in today's lecture and we hope it's a good one. Thank you.